Hey everybody, it's Dave Combo. I'm back today with another special video to show you a really cool feature within Clip Studio. Uh, up on the screen, I've got an image from Dreamside, and this is from Chapter 2. Now, if you've watched the video book for Chapter 2, uh, you might remember that I had a shot that showed off Skyline Children's Hospital, which is the hospital that Sarah is staying at. And I wasn't terribly happy with the shot that I did because I thought that one, it didn't really give an idea of the hospital's place within the, the, the city. And I had designed Skyline to be uh, sort of at the edge of a city and kind of a large city at that. And so I wanted to give as much description as I could for where this hospital was to just help place the uh, the reader and, and understand more about the setting without having to really spend time talking about the city itself, which really isn't a very important part of the story. So by doing a drawing like this, where I can show some of the other elements that are pretty close to the hospital, I can start to give you a feeling of what the, the atmosphere of, uh, of Dreamside's uh, hospital scenes is like, okay? And, and that can help you to understand more about what it feels like to be Sarah, who's kind of stuck in this hospital here and has to look out and see all this action going on in the city. And you can, you can sort of get a bit more empathy for her situation uh, if you understand more about the setting. So for story reasons, it's very important that I show off as much as possible uh, without really distracting from the main point, which is uh, Sarah's perspective of the city rather than the city itself. Okay, now as I was designing this city, uh, th there was a lot of stuff that I had to think about and uh, it takes an awful lot of time to construct a picture like this and, and to do it really well. You know, you can see that if I zoom in here, there are a lot of details. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about things like, well, let's see, where would there be a parking lot? Well, you know, in, in a big hospital like this, there would have to probably be a lot of access for cars. And usually there is some sort of an emergency parking lot or something like that that's in the front so that people who are going to an emergency section, you can see actually here, if I zoom in on the sign, uh, you can see it says ER, emergency, this way. So you can you can see that I thought about how people would actually access the hospital. Uh, they might come uh, and drive down this street and enter directly here if they had like an emergency drop off. Um, and if they needed to park their car quickly, they could probably go into this lot right here. But then I also thought, well, there's probably gonna have to be additional parking. And so I did construct another parking garage in the back here. And you can see, when I'm thinking about size relationships between things, this is where perspective really comes into play. The cars, you know, if I establish that a car, for example, is this size, well then I know how big a person is going to be. And if I know how big a person is going to be, then I know how big doorways and windows should be. And so I'm able to draw things relative to other things, okay? So there's so much to figure out, as you can see, that if I can eliminate some of the concern over making sure that it's set up in perfect perspective, it can save me an awful lot of time and headaches as I'm trying to construct a believable set. Okay, now fortunately Clip Studio does have a really amazing tool set for doing just this and I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, let's switch over to Clip Studio and I'm going to show you how you can use something called a perspective ruler. Alright, so I'm going to make a new layer here and I just want to start with a kind of a, a dilemma situation that you may find yourself in. Let's just say that you're trying to draw a house and you're trying to draw it in perspective but you're, you really don't you either, you either don't really know what you're doing with perspective or, uh, well, maybe you, uh, you just don't want to spend the time trying to figure out exactly how the lines go. You want to get right in there and start sketching. So what I'll do is I'll just make, I'll, I'll attempt to make a house in one point perspective very, very quickly. Okay, so I'm going to draw, it's, it's going to be like a super basic kind of generic house here. All right, uh, and you can see I'm not being very careful with the lines. You know, maybe I've got a door here window here. So you can see it's it's pretty sloppy, right? My lines aren't really where they need to be and it doesn't look exactly accurate, okay? Well, what I can do is I can go now, I'll make a new layer and I'm gonna go under the, the menu bar, I'm gonna pick layer, then ruler dash frame, and then create perspective ruler. And it brings up another option box to choose one point or three point perspective. So I'm gonna choose one point and you can see right off the bat, it automatically draws in for me a horizon line and a vanishing point. 
It might be a little bit hard for you to see on the video, but these are very thin lines, but uh, it's not too bad to work with. So I'm gonna go on, on the toolbar, I'm gonna choose the operation button. This is basically for operating mostly 3D tools that are, are, are within Clip Studio. So if I click on the horizon line or any of the parts of the bar, I can click on this green box here and now I can adjust the, hori the horizon line by moving it vertically and the vanishing point by moving left and right. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to move this roughly where I believe my perspective is supposed to be. So I'm going to drag these lines here that are, are moving off the vanishing point to line up with my uh, various angles in the house so that I can make sure that the vanishing point is roughly where it needs to be. So you can see here, I can try and line it up with this line here on the house. And let's say um, I'm going to put the horizon line here. You want to get your horizon line set up before you move the vanishing points. It makes it a little bit easier for you to do. All right, and then let's say that is going to be for this line here. Okay, so let's just say that I'm happy with the position of the lines here. Now, when you create a perspective ruler, Clip Studio should automatically turn on a button here called Snap to Special Ruler, but if that's not on, you wanna make sure to turn it on. And uh, the reason that you wanna have it on is that when I make a new layer now, every single line that I draw is going to snap to these ruler lines. Now, not exactly the ones that are drawn. These are just indications of how lines are going to move in perspective. The truth is that I can draw a line anywhere that I want to, for example, right here. And you can see what it's going to do is it's automatically going to snap the line in perspective. All right. You can, it's a little bit hard for you to tell because you can't see what's actually happening here. But um, I can assure you that I'm drawing a very crude line that's, I'm not really even trying to be in perspective here, but it's gonna snap it to the, the lines that are moving toward the vanishing point. And then if I try and draw a perfect um, horizontal line, it's gonna basically snap it to the horizon line, okay? So if I make a new layer here, I'm gonna basically try and redraw my house, but this time I'm gonna draw using the perspective rulers, and it, it's gonna snap into place all of the lines right where they're supposed to be. And it's all depending on how I choose to move the pen. That's how the software figures it out. For example, you can see right here, just as I did this, it's continuing this line, right? But I want there to be, uh, I want there to be a more uh, perfectly horizontal line. So I have to make sure that as I'm dragging the pen, I'm drawing as close as possible to where that line is supposed to be. And then the software will intelligently figure out what I'm actually trying to draw. Uh, here for the windows, right? I'm gonna just come in here and draw a line between the two of them so I can make sure that they're at the same height. You can see there, it's, it's trying to draw that line in perspective. So I have to make sure that I'm careful about that. And then when I put the door in, so you can see how very quickly and uh, I can reconstruct this house and making sure that it's in perspective. Now this window, you can see I had a little bit too low. All right. So this is a really awesome tool to be able to help you lock something in perspective and make sure that it's accurate. Of course, for certain things that are not uh, sort of lines that are directly associated with these three, for example, this bent, uh, roof here, you will have to turn off the perspective ruler, otherwise it'll keep trying to lock those lines in. But if I do want to figure it out, the way to do it is to draw a reference point that is actually in perspective. And I'm going to say, okay, well the roof is, let's say it's evenly divided, so the middle point of the roof is going to be right around here. And then I'll draw another line that's in perspective there. And so that's going to help me figure out now that I have to draw a, a line from this point to this corner of the house and from this point to this corner of the house. And you can see now I can draw in my roof and it will be basically accurate in perspective. And it, it'll, it'll save me a lot of time figuring this out on my own. I don't have to actually get out a ruler and I, I don't have to worry about, oh, you know, I drew this, this line that's not in perfect perspective. So this will really help out with that. So what I want to do now is I want to jump over and I'm going to show you three point perspective. Okay, so what I've, what I've done now is I've switched over to a new file that is basically just the 
image that I showed you earlier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I can use a perspective ruler to make uh, an image like this much easier to construct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer that is just filled with white so that I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna go back to the menu bar. I'm gonna choose layer, ruler, and then create perspective ruler. This time I'm gonna pick three point perspective. I'm gonna hit okay. So you can see, once again, it creates a horizon line and it creates three vanishing points, one, two, and three, all right? So what I wanna do is I wanna load each of these vanishing points into the image in a way that will make sense with the rough that I brought in. Now, of course, this is not a rough sketch. This is pretty much the finished piece, but just imagine that this is a sketch because I wanna show you how this is gonna work. So what I wanna do is line up these reference lines for each vanishing point okay, with basically two lines of a particular object. So let's say, for example, I use the box shape of the hospital here as a reference point, and then I'm gonna move this vanishing point like that, okay? That's how you're, you're gonna do that for each vanishing point. But of course, the first thing that I have to do is move the horizon line. So I'm gonna grab this little green box here once again, and I'm gonna move it way up because this is a bird's eye view, right? So bird's eye view, we're gonna see a lot of the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna move my vanishing point here so that I can line it up with the lines in that particular direction on the box. So I'm gonna move that over to the left because that's about, I think, where it has to be. And I'll zoom in and I can just move these and try and line them up with these lines here that are moving in this particular direction. Let's just say that I'm happy with that. I'm gonna do the same thing with the opposite side. You can see that's not really in alignment there, so I'm gonna to have to move that vanishing point over until I get it pretty close, maybe a little bit more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And then finally, for the vertical, the third point, I can actually move it around to the other side so it can be coming from below. And then I'm going to try and line that up with the verticals of the hospital. And actually this looks pretty good. It's not perfectly in alignment, but you can see now these purple lines have basically intersected the, uh, to create basically the shape of the hospital. All right, so I know that right now my lines are in correct perspective. So every single element of this piece that I need to draw now, I know is going to be in perspective. So I don't have to worry about figuring out how accurate is this line in perspective so that I can begin to focus on things like details and I can actually design certain pieces, okay? So if I make a new layer, making sure that in the toolbar here, the snap to special ruler button is activated, I'm gonna bring in a G pen and I'm just gonna start sketching. So basically I'm gonna go out over my rough and whoops, that's white, and I'm gonna begin drawing my lines and I'm not being careful with this. I'm just drawing very rough. I'm being very loose with my lines, okay? And I'm not worried about it because I know that it's going to draw it in correct perspective, all right? So you can see right off the bat how quickly I'm constructing all these little pieces and I'm not stopping to look at my vanishing points. I'm not taking out a ruler and figuring out every single one of these because it's automatically snapping them right where they need to be, okay? So if I need to come in and figure out some sort of interesting design, you know, uh, I, can, I can do that without having to worry about making sure it's in perspective. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a really cool idea of just how useful this will be. And for those of you who are, you know, maybe uh, familiar with working with perspective tools traditionally are probably salivating over this right now because this is such an immense time saver and it can help you in such amazing ways to very quickly construct a set and of course you can also use this for uh, creating the sort of complex object that you might not even think about doing otherwise for example let me turn this layer off and I'll turn this all the way up and let's just say that I'm trying to create some sort of a like uh, like a, just a cube that's in space and is kind of made up of like a, all of these little like circuit board designs, right? Well, by just keeping the perspective rulers on, I can just go really crazy and put this sort of design on the box that you know might be very complex to draw 
if I wasn't using the perspective rulers. You know, making sure that all of this stuff is in perfect perspective is kind of complicated, right? So this is something that can really save a lot of time. Or maybe I want to take these and have these are actually be cut out of the box, right? So I want to make all these little cutouts here and uh, let's see, this is, maybe I want to make like a shelf here, you know, something, yeah, something like this. So you can see how quickly you can construct kind of an irregular building. Maybe there's like a windows here or something. There's windows here. You can see, you can just have a ton of fun with this. Okay, so this is a great tool that will help you save a ton of time if you're trying to set up a complex cityscape or something that requires an, a lot of attention to detail and perspective. Okay, so I hope you found this video especially useful. Um, and I, I hope that this is just one more tool in your arsenal that can help you get that project going that you've always wanted to do. So go ahead and share with me your results. If you draw some really cool stuff in perspective, I'm anxious to see what you came up with. Um, and you can always send me things by uh, linking your social media accounts. I do ask that you don't email me attachments, but you can go to my website, which is www.dmcumbo.com, and then forward slash contact, you can go directly to my contact form and you can send me messages and let me know what you're working on. I love to get those links so I can see what you've posted on your, your Twitter accounts or your DeviantArt accounts or wherever you're, you're hosting your artwork. Share it with me and let me know what you are working on and I'll do my best to give you feedback on your work. You can also link directly in the comments below and uh, let me know what you think about these amazing tools and how you plan to use them in the future. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.